Do you want to know what my least favorite and most difficult class in high school was? Biology. Especially when it started covering cellular biology. But you know what I love? Pokemon. So let's use the Pokemon Zygarde as an excuse to learn some cellular biology. <laughs> and this educational video is brought to you by Catalyst Gaming Mints. Energy mints that fill you with the power you need to not only game at your best, but also help with memory retention while studying or working. Its special ingredient, Siberian Eleuthero Root, helps it supercharge your cells longer and without the crash. The tins are even black with green hexagons, meaning they match Zygarde. Perfect for this video! Catalyst Gaming Mints! Check them out by clicking that link in the description and be sure to use coupon code NOGGIN for a special discount. So then, Zygarde. This legendary Pokémon comes from Generation 6 and is the Z Pokémon in Pokémon XYZ. It also plays a role in the Gen 7 Pokémon games Sun and Moon, a much larger one in fact. Zygarde's role in the Pokémon world is also a very, very important one. It's the Guardian of the Earth, and the preserver of balance between life and death. Kind of like what white blood cells and other kinds of cells do for your body. Protect it, and balance life and death within it. Your cells are constantly dying and being born. And that just makes Zygarde's design all the better. What makes it so special is that it is made up of cells. Well, I mean everything is made up of cells, but Zygarde is different because it is made up of huge cells to make the cells more obvious. This is the Zygarde core. It is essentially the brain or the sentience of Zygarde, and there are multiple of them and they come together into one life form, much like worms and some octopuses. But that's not to say that worms and octopuses have multiple brains, that is actually a misconception. No living thing on Earth has or ever had multiple brains. Rather, some have their neurons spread around their body, meaning their singular brain is just all over the place. But anyway, we aren't exactly sure how many Zygarde cores there are in the entire world, but there are at least five, which is also the maximum that any one Zygarde body can hold. They are seen in the chest of Perfect Zygarde. So what are the rest of its pieces? Well, those are Zygarde cells. They lack sentience, but are needed to build the body up, just like our real cells. If you can gather 10 of these plus a core, you can create the 10% Zygarde. Get 50, and you can get the 50% Zygarde. And get 100, you attain perfect Zygarde. This is what is known as a Super Saiyan that has ascended past a Super Saiyan. Now clearly, this is an oversimplification of our real bodies, which can be made up of 37.2 trillion cells. But really, this just makes Zygarde the perfect example for teaching the very basics of cellular biology. It's much less complicated to consider 100 cells instead of 32 trillion. 37 trillion, I mean. Dang it. So let's answer one of the biggest and yet most basic questions about cellular biology using Zygarde. And that question is, how do cells communicate? Cells, like Zygarde, lack a mouth and yet are still somehow able to move and get things done and communicate. Zygarde is even able to summon cells from all over the world to its location. And this isn't just because it's fiction, I mean, the fiction is heavily exaggerating it. But, but it has some truth to it. So imagine, if you will, a classroom of middle school kids. Each kid represents a Zygarde cell. And then there is a you somewhere along the edge with your colorful spiky hair because you are the main character. And you want to ask your friend next to you if they want to trade Pokemon later. But as soon as you say anything, as soon as you utter speech in any way, the teacher will hear it. So what do you do? You write a note and pass it to your friend. This is basically the same thing that cells do, but with proteins going from one cell to the next, rather than a piece of paper. Cell walls are covered with different receptors and excretors, and can do all sorts of various functions depending on the type of cell. It's truly quite amazing. And since cells don't have mouths, they do this communicating by showing things off. Depending on its combination of glycoforms and displays, it can pass along all sorts of messages, from its own health to a danger signal, letting surrounding cells know that it killed a bacterium or a virus, and to be on the lookout for more nearby. Like posting a wanted sign on your body. But communicating to the person next to you, oh, 
That's nothing. What if you want to ask your friend across the room for a Pokemon battle during recess? What then? Well, if you have enough dexterity, you can quickly fold a paper airplane and throw it with perfect aim right at them. If you can land that with an accuracy rating of at least 89%, then you can perform something that your cells are constantly doing 24-7 without a brain. So of course, there are a few good examples of this in your body too. You have helper T cells and white blood cells which are free-flowing. They can read these messages from your other cells and pass them along to all the other cells they happen to bump into, much like passing a note through class. But what's really awesome is the throwing of a message, like what neuron cells in your nervous system do. Oftentimes, neurons aren't touching. Sure, they could send a message that would eventually reach around and reach the other neuron, but in an emergency situation like you being in pain, or in Zygarde's case, the world is ending. There is no time for that. So the neurons send out neurotransmitters, little squirts of chemicals that carry with it a message, much like the ones in Zeros in Code. Over 100 different messages have been found within these little squirts, and the neurons always know which one to use and which way to shoot it. Somehow. Science at first is answering questions, but answering questions always leads to more questions than you started with. And this is just like how Zygarde shoots its earthen energy into the ground to contact a few other cells around its vicinity to come join it. Now what about that scene at the climax of Pokemon XYZ, where Zygarde sends a message across the globe and gets every Zygarde cell to come to it? Can cells even do something like that? Total body-wide messaging? Yeah. And actually, this may be the easiest part of this whole video to explain. So let's imagine 10% Zygarde, and it's in the middle of a battle and it's getting attacked. By being attacked, it feels pain and fear. But what is that exactly? When you get scared, your hairs rise on end, your heart beats faster, you breathe harder, you feel anxious and full of energy. But why? Because when you got hit, for example, the cells and nerves that were directly hit send out a signal to the brain basically saying, WHOA THERE, HUGE DANGER ALERT! And this message gets sent in the same way we talked about the paper airplane throwing neurons. But when the brain gets the signal, your brain cells and various glands and the, their cells send out a burst of action. In one brain signal, all of the glands throughout your body know exactly what to do in this exact situation. Pump out adrenaline, among plenty other chemicals. And this exact combination of chemicals gets pumped into your bloodstream. And when they reach the heart, the heart cells know exactly what to do. Pump faster. This exact same signal reaches the lungs, and the lungs do something different. It opens up your lungs to get more oxygen into your blood. This exact same chemical combination reaches the tiny muscles in your skin under each individual hair, and they are told to contract, raising the hair. In just a few very short steps, the few cells in your body sent out an entire body-wide message. And in this case, one that could save your life or in Zygarde's case, the world. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, high school biology was by far my least favorite subject. But now I'm figuring out that that's just because I didn't know how to have fun with it. Apply your passions to school, and trust me, you'll like it a lot more. I hope you learned something today, and until next time, you stay awesome, and never stop using that noggin. And hey, if you like science-heavy videos like this one, I have one right here about how the fire flower in Super Mario works. It's an older one of mine, but it's still very awesome. And here's a playlist of other science-heavy ones. Be sure to leave a like and comment down below, and thank you once again.